What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow your app downloads and more importantly, those revenues. And today I've got a topic that a lot of questions have come in asking this particular question. It's, hey, my ad mob has been suspended. It's been banned. What are some things that you can do so you don't fall into this trap? It's a common thing that has happened and I brought on an expert because I don't know everything. And that's why I love this. I love doing what I do because I don't know everything and I could bring on expert guests to really answer your questions. So without further ado, it is Sid Gupta. He is the co-founder at AppBroda. They are Google's channel partner with demand of AdX advertising. They're going to really help you grow your ECPMs and obviously your ad revenues in return. So without further ado, Sid, welcome to the video. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? Now. Let's talk about the main reason, and I'm sure a lot of people, I've, I've been reading a lot of blogs, I'm on a lot of Reddit uh, groups, I read that most account suspensions happen because of invalid activity. Now, uh, Google defines invalid activity in a couple of ways. Uh, I'll try and cover each one of them, and we'll see how you can sort of avoid it, or what you can do to ensure that you can get your account restored. Now, when your account gets suspended because of invalid activity, you still have 30 days to ensure uh, you get your account uh, activated. Now in those 30 days, uh, obviously in case of invalid activity, Google does not give you the chance to make an appeal, but it still gives you a chance to make changes in our account and it ensures that manual intervention as well as pattern recognition is happening in our account on a daily basis to ensure if they find any other flaws so that they can restore the account. Now. If you think about pattern recognition, uh, you have to understand the core KPIs that they're trying to study, right? Uh, let's pick the biggest one, which is uh, clicks. Now, when Google is trying to understand uh, an issue with your account, there is a pattern that they've recognized, right? Uh, there are four or five KPIs that they primarily look at. And again, this is a very basic understanding of it. You can always, there are multiple KPIs that Google evaluates, uh, but the four or five KPIs that you can yourself sort of evaluate uh, first are clicks. Uh, the second is downloads. The third is ad requests. These are three very important KPIs that you should be continuously tracking if your account gets suspended because of invalid activity. Now, the first thing that you should look at is understanding if uh, how you've implemented your ads. Now, one thing which uh, we sort of sometimes when you're in the process of releasing an app, uh, we end up doing a lot of testing. And a lot of times our internal teams are testing the app ourselves. Uh, in those times, Google has become extremely strict because the amount of uh, sessions or ad requests or impressions that are happening in the account are really, really less. And if the team is testing during that time, the number of clicks recorded during that time for, from the same IP or the same user are extremely high, because of which there is a very, very high chance your account might get suspended because of invalid activity. So please, please ensure you use test ads always when you're doing this. If uh, this is the case you ensure that the next testing that you do ensure you do it only only on test ads that's the first thing that you can try and do the second thing uh, always happens is if google sees there is a pattern in the amount of clicks uh, so if there is an extremely high ctr or if google feels that there are same repeated users who are doing uh, those clicks now to do this there are a couple of things that you can try and do uh, the first thing is where you're getting your advertise where you're getting your users from now, usually what happens is, and I'm sure you guys have a couple of sources, it was always recommended to limit down the number of uh, sources that you're going with. If usually Google or Facebook are recommended in terms of going for the advertiser, we recommend that you lower down your budget massively and limit it to a very small budget and ensure you only limit it to trustworthy sources, trustworthy countries. Go only target countries that you feel have really genuine traffic. If you're targeting tier three, tier four countries, please remove them out of your uh, targeting. The second thing, which is very important, is limit the ads on your app. Uh, the idea is during the 30-day phase when uh, Google is assessing your account, uh, you need to ensure it does not have a single pattern that uh, seems out of place. So we recommend that you limit the ads on your app. Clean your app as much as possible. Limit the ads as much as possible, right? Uh, the other thing which is also very, very critical is, and this is a very common problem, and I'm sure, again, this is something that I've read in a lot of blogs, uh, is uh, a lot of times your competitors trying to get and ban your app. This is also a very common concern, right? So what we would recommend is use Firebase 
and limit the ads per user. Uh, put in a frequency capping there and ensure the number of ads you show per user is limited to one or two. Uh, reduce the frequency to such a level so that such fraud is also avoided so that in during those 30 days there is no possibility of such things now uh, the other thing uh, there also is a very problem is accidental cleaned accidental clicks uh, accidental clicks is another area where uh, there's a possibility that the ad experience that you've built within your app might not be the cleanest possible like uh, we uh, there is a user flow that's going through user still learning the ropes of your app he's trying to understand the the what the app does or what the game does and a lot of times because the user does not understand he's learning about the app experience he ends up clicking on the wrong place and eventually goes to an ad and then goes back so this google counts as accidental clicks so imagine if i'm playing a game and i end up clicking on an ad which i did not want to go to the first reaction would be to go back and if this is a pattern that emerges out of a lot of a percentage large percentage of your users google automatically considers this as accidental clicks and essentially invalid traffic so try and identify those spots where uh, you might get accidental clicks and remove those placements asap these are three very very important ways to ensure that you clean up your app experience and remove any invalid click activity for which can result into a high ctr or a pattern in ctr that would result for google to suspend your account now the second thing uh, which usually people don't think about is the content uh, now uh, people always come to me and say uh, isn't ad mob separate google play policy separate uh, if google plays approve my google account, uh, app to be on google play why is content a problem but that's not the case uh, ad mob and google play are very very closely uh, related when you start looking at policies it might not be the fact that google play has caught the policy issue but ad mob might catch that policy as well as a content issue and essentially bans you from ad mob first this is a very common way that ad mob works now uh, there is a very very large data set as to what uh, can lead to content violations but i'll try and cover a few of them right and uh, again we'll try and cover some of them uh, what we'll do is also after the call i'll share a couple of links uh, with steve and maybe he can share it uh, in the description so that you guys can go through it yourself there's a very very long list in terms of content violations which result in app suspension uh, google account google play suspension uh, sorry ad mob suspension now hey, Sid. Uh, well, just to interrupt here when you're talking about content you're talking about content within the app like i'm the app owner i'm the app developer and there's certain content within my app that's causing this to with ad mob that's causing an issue with ad mob correct okay got it all right and i will link all that up into the youtube description below as well all right take it away sid great so uh, exactly steve uh, we essentially sometimes uh, it's, it seems fairly obvious that if google plays approve my app why would admob avoid admob sort of block me but again reiterating that's not the case google might block your admob and might never remove you from google play so you've got to ensure your content is always in sync with the policies that are there right now the first and the most important thing uh, a lot of developers miss out is the uh, is the age gating it is extremely important that the users know what age you're targeting google knows what age group you're targeting at now uh, google's recent update on uh, age gating uh, it clearly says that if you're targeting kids which are below the age of 13 there are a lot of declarations that you have to do now if you're targeting below the age of uh, 13 years old you cannot collect their data in any way that's fairly 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 simple that you should make sure so ensure that you're targeting users below the age of 13 please do not collect their data try and limit as much as possible and if you have to really have to try and justify within the app experience please understand the person who's going to be actually uh, evaluating your account at the end of the day is not going to have a lot of time to actually go through your app understand what you're trying to sell they will just go through it really quickly and give a decision based on that So you have to make sure the person sitting on the other side of the uh, um, <laughs> in the policy team does not have too much time. So you want to ensure everything is in sync, and there is not even a single thing that might seem out of place. So age gating is a really important parameter. You have to ensure that uh, your age gating, if it's below thirteen, please do not collect any data. And again, if you collect, ensure you uh, give enough hooks uh, within the app to uh, give users the information as to why you're collecting that information. 
right? The second thing, even if it's below 13 or above 13, if you are collecting data, make sure you outline why you're collecting that data. A lot of times uh, apps sort of capture mobile numbers, capture email addresses, capture location, but there are features that are there for a very small part of the app. They might not be required for the full functioning of the app. And that a lot of times causes your app to get suspended because um, your account gets suspended because when somebody is judging the app does not see any value there. So in short, at the very beginning of the account, clearly state what value you're going to be giving by collecting that data or try and prevent collecting that data till you reach that point where you need that feature. So very important in your app design. Uh, the third thing, which is also fairly important is a lot of times we use iframes as a part of our app strategy. We might frame some content and bring it to our app. Now, during that time, another thing that uh, sometimes we miss is that we are also responsible for the iframe content that's available in our app. A lot of times uh, we pull web pages, we pull video content from other sources and we are responsible for that content as well. So if there is any adult content, if there's any pornographic uh, content, if there is any violent content, if there is any content um, with sort of uh, hate, hate crimes, hate speech, a lot of times Google will ban your account because of that. Now, uh, another very interesting thing is how you call your ads. A lot of times we are, we are very eager to understand and experiment different formats, how we can show ads, right? Uh, one thing that I've seen and native ads become a really, really popular way to sort of integrate your ad experience. But if your native ad experience looks very, very similar to your content, Google, uh, that's against Google's policy. So if you're showing a dialogue box or um, a notification or your, your native ad looks very, very similar to the content and an individual who's sitting on the other side cannot distinguish between the ad and the content, that would also lead to policy violation. Uh, sorry, uh, your account getting suspended. So that's another reason that you should look at your content and ensure it's right. Uh, uh, another very interesting thing that uh, people sort of miss is the unexpected clicks, right? Another thing that I, I forgot to mention during accidental clicks is during the app design, uh, we, divide, we design the app for a lot of, uh, we might have a functionality which might have a transparent background and there might be a little bit of overlap between the ad and the content. In some of those devices, when the user clicks, it might lead to an accidental click. This is another very, very common occurrence in a lot of cases that we help developers with, where uh, because of a transparent background, uh, the user clicks on the ad by mistake and it leads to a lot of accidental clicks. So try and ensure your ad boundaries and your content boundaries are very, very clearly defined and very segregated so that there can never be an overlap in any device. Uh, that's extremely, extremely important. Uh, another thing that's extremely important is you cannot place ads directly lead to an ad uh, on any navigation button. Uh, and this is something that a lot of people experiment with. Uh, if you click on the next button, if you click on the back button, uh, if you click on uh, uh, an icon, it should not lead to an ad. This again is against Google Ads policy. Uh, now, another very important thing is the back button. And uh, it's a very understated policy, but in the content, uh, if you're looking at the overall content of your app, the back button plays an extremely important part in your app's design. The back button allows smooth navigation for the developer, uh, for the user to go and back for, uh, to go come back from any screen. If in any case, the user ends in a timeless loop, or if the back button is not working in any functionality, in any uh, scenario, Google considers that as a content violation, and that again might lead to your account getting suspended. Uh, now, while having said that, uh, this is again, there are a bunch of other content uh, guidelines and we are more than happy to share with you. Uh, but I think there's a very, very long list and we'll take you through all of them. Uh, I think it's best that you can go through all of them and understand what it is. And if you've got any doubts, you guys can come to us and we can help you clarify or find exactly what's wrong with your app, right? Uh, the final thing which is supremely important is the ad experience, right? Uh, in the ad experience, and I'm sure uh, there are general policy guidelines a lot of you have already read, understood. There are two, three things that I'd like to cover uh, which lead to violations, especially for apps which are just starting off. Uh, it is, uh, and this is something that a lot of developers sort of think about when they're trying to design their app in their initial phases of their app launch. 
they try and integrate ads at the very start of the experience, right? And that is the time where Google has a very hawkish eye on what you're trying to do, what value you're trying to provide to the user. At that point of time, you will do a lot of iterations within our app to ensure the functionality that you finally want to drive, to ensure retentions in plain in your app. That uh, works out. In such a scenario, a lot of times we put ads at experiences or ad, uh, we build ad designs that might not be the most suitable. Uh, let me give you a few examples. Any ad experience or an interstitial ad or a video ad or a rewarded ad that comes at the start of a functionality. So for example, if I'm starting a game and at the start of the game, I have an interstitial ad, a rewarded ad. At that point of time, the user is not expecting any interstitial ad. He's expecting to start the game. He's expected to join the functionality. He's expected to scan um, uh, uh, an image if it's a PDF uh, scanner. So at that point of time, if you put an interstitial or rewarded ad or a video ad, that is against policy again. Another reason for your account to get deactivated. Uh, another very common concern is when you put an a, a interstitial ad, from the click of a button when your app first opens up if you put an interstitial app right there that's also against uh, ad policy google is actually uh, google realizes this is an extremely good monetization opportunity for users uh, for developers and hence they've actually launched a new format called app open so the right strategy would be to replace your interstitial with an app open ad now, if you want to read more about app open you can read more you're more than again uh, welcome to come reach out to us and we can help you understand how the experience should be love it all right anything that we missed that you want to make sure we cover Sid? i think we are covered all right awesome well guys it is appbroda.com go check them out they're going to really look at your app if you've been suspended they'll help you out but they're also what they're really really good at is helping you earn more money from your ad revenue and that's because they have access to Google's new platform that you really need a special invite to called Google AdX. And they're going to really level up your ad revenue by tapping into Google's ad inventory through Google AdX. If you want to learn more, all you got to do is go to appbroda.com. Use any of the links that I put into the description below. But once again, it is appbroda.com. And Sid, is there anything else you want to make sure that they know from that? Again, reach out to us for any issues. We are more than happy to help you find solutions. Awesome. And join us for our next video where we're going to talk about how you can really increase your ECPM. Once again, it is at Broda.com and I'll see you on the next video.